So you remember when it was a little bit on the chilly side for this time of year last week? That was pretty nice considering it's usually really hot and humid, right? But you know what? Things are changing now and the warm air is going to be expanding toward the east. Big ridge in the jet stream. I mean, it's not only going to be just regular summer hot, it's actually going to be like well above average hot into a lot of the country, including the Midwest. Look at Chicago, 90 degrees on Tuesday. Look at all those 90s. St. Louis, that's about 10 degrees above average, 94 degrees for Wednesday. And then look at the Northeast. How about New York at 90 on Tuesday? We've also got upper 80s and low 90s for a lot of the Northeast all the way through Wednesday. You're looking at a big wave from Hurricane Fred as it was hitting the Cape Verde Islands, not only through the weekend, but also on Monday, those palm trees swaying around. Uh, this has been a really unique system, okay? Very interesting meteorologically, because usually when we talk about Cape Verde season right here where we are in the core of Atlantic hurricane season, we're talking about these waves coming off the west coast of Africa, just usually a wave of energy when it's moving through those islands, and then eventually down the road it could become something like a tropical storm or a hurricane. But the unique thing about this situation was that was actually a hurricane when it was actually over the Cape Verde Islands. Now. It's been downgraded to a tropical storm. That was pretty much the main show with Fred. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff, but from here on out, just about a zero chance it's gonna affect the lower 48. A cruise ship should never feel like a thrill ride, but that's what happened to the Grand Voyager in 2005. Rough waves from Cyclone Valentina battered the ship as it crossed the Mediterranean Sea towards Barcelona. One wave knocked out the ship's control systems, leaving the cruise liner at the mercy of the sea. And the sea was merciless, causing the ship to tip so far you could see the bottom of it. The sickening motion went on for hours. Several people were injured. The most serious was a broken leg. The ship finally made it back to shore with the help of tugboats. I'm meteorologist Minnick Davis, The Weather Channel. So we all know that planes are built to be able to withstand lightning strikes, but boom, there you go. There's video evidence to prove it. This happened on Tuesday night at Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. We slowed it down for you, you can see it. It really is incredible imagery. No wonder there was a ground stop for the area. Atlanta has been inundated with a lot of rain and lightning throughout the week. Million. The nuclear deal with Iran could add one million barrels of crude oil per day to global markets. That's at a time when there's already a huge supply glut. The world produces about two million barrels a day more than it consumes. Now, Iran has the fourth biggest oil reserves in the world, but sanctions have blocked that oil from world markets until now. It'll take a while for Iran to ramp up production, but even a modest increase could send oil prices down and gas to $2 a gallon again. Thank you. 
WRCR News Channel 7's Madison Wade went to see firsthand what could happen. She joins us now with what she's learned. Madison. Yeah, Allison Mike, according to seismologists, geologists, locally and internationally, the big one will happen. It's not a matter of if, it's actually a matter of when. A geologist at Shasta College in Reading tells me the article lays out a good foundation of what's going on, but there's more that people should be aware of. The Cascadia subduction zone is a dangerous fault system and uh, it really could go in a large way. Geologist Randy Reed is talking about the really big one, which is called that for a reason. Researchers say when it hits, an earthquake and tsunami combination will destroy the entire west coastline from Mendocino to Canada. The longer that length, the bigger the magnitude, the more energy is released, therefore the longer the ground shaking. In a New Yorker article called The Really Big One, seismologists say a shake with a magnitude between 8.7 and 9.2 can happen if the Cascadia subduction zone ruptures. So, catastrophic though. It could be. Reed says an earthquake that large is possible. The longer it's locked, the greater the potential for a big event, but it doesn't require a big event. He says the subduction zone is divided into three segments. If the largest component went, which is the Oregon to Washington section, we'd have a big event. If the southern section broke, then Northern California would feel the biggest hit. We're way down here, yeah. Reed shows me a problem that's been happening for years. As the west coast moves west, a segment of the sea floor is moving east. The rate at which they're converging or colliding with one another is building up tension between the sea floor and our coastline. As that pressure builds, the potential for a break to happen increases. So the longer we keep this locked with these compressing, colliding forces, the greater the potential for a big event. We need to do more to be prepared. We need to educate the public. We need to develop emergency evacuation plans. That's why Reed says he became a teacher, to understand and to help others do the same. Just these types of things, I think, are just amazing. Um, and to understand our natural world and to be able to relate to it, and it's, it's the type of thing that I like to share and understand. Reed says if any segment of the Cascadia subduction zone was to break, then Shasta County would shake. He said depending on the magnitude, it wouldn't be devastating, but homes on poor foundation would have some problems. Madison Wade, KRCR, News Channel 7.